Welcome everybody to the second exercise of the reinforcement learning course. My name is Mario Peña and I will give uh, giving you uh, uh, the information for this tutorial and the next tutorial as well. Uh, this tutorial deals with the reinfor with uh, Markov chains and Markov decision processes, which uh, is a part of the theory which you have should have already covered uh, by watching the videos and with the Q and A from the previous week. Hopefully, uh, this exercise will provide you with a little bit more theoretical, not more practical uh, background and uh, a practical handle of these problems. So. Um, what is a Markov chain? A Markov chain is a collection uh, of states which are Markov or information states, meaning that, that uh, all of the information of the system is contained in the current state, we don't care about the history, and uh, it also has some information about how the system evolves from any given state. Um, so it's a stochastic environment in which uh, we will evolve from different states to to other states uh, with a given probability and our transition rule between sta between states is what we see here on the on the left part we have uh, the next state is uh, the probability for the next state is equal to the probability of the uh, current state times a state transition probability matrix uh, this might be mat might seem familiar to some of you. It's very similar to what how we have in system theory, where we have the next uh, state is the state matrix times the current state in discrete uh, with a discrete uh, uh, representation. However, note that in this case the state transition probability matrix is to the right of this vector. So in here we're dealing with a row vector and. Uh, the state transition probability matrix is here. This modifies how some of the equations evolve, and it's actually beneficial for um, for some uh, algebra uh, down the line, as we will see. So the first thing that we have to do in this tutorial is to uh, create or to deduce the uh, state transition probability matrix from the diagram that we're given here on the left. Uh, from this diagram, uh, it has a very simple interpretation. If we're in a, any given state, we have certain probabilities of uh, going to other states. And this is the exact same information that it's provided in the state transition probability matrix. Um, a each of the entries of this matrix uh, tells us the probability uh, if we're in state i to go to state j. So, for example, this is uh, this is uh, entry one two, so it will be the, the probability from going to from state one to state two. A state one is initial beer, state two is mid friends, and we see that indeed, from initial beer to mid friends, we have a probability of 0.6, and that is how we, we can fill up this matrix here on the right. And also in the tutorial solution template, you also see the same values obtained there. Um, we can think then uh, that in the um, in a Markov chain there can be a stationary state, which essentially means if you make tr make transitions an infinite number of times, where do you end up? And an intuitive way of uh, approaching this or to thinking about it is sort of like this all roads lead to Rome. And in this case, we can see that um, if we observe this a little bit, if we make infinite number of transitions, we will always end up sleeping. Uh, there's not uh, another possibility, uh, and no matter how much time you spend there, at the end, you will always go there, so we will expect the stationary state to um, be the sleep, the s sleep state. Um, the formal definition of the uh, stationary state, uh, or the state probability, in there uh, doesn't change after the next transition. Uh, so the, that uh, stationary state uh, probability vector p is equal to that uh, the transition from that state to the next one. 
uh, if we go through the equations we can see that this means that uh, the the mat the matrix i6 uh, the the product of p times the identity matrix minus the state transition probability matrix uh, must be equal to zero this um, form is also going back to system theory it's similar to what we have um, for finding eigenvectors uh, and eigenvalues of a, of a system uh, in this case the eigenvalue will be equal to 1 because we're interested in the state that doesn't change after the state transition and 1 is significant in, in probability uh, environments and in the end we're dealing with probabilities here so the problem with this is that this matrix, uh, 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 the identity matrix minus the state transition probability matrix is many times not invertible and indeed that is, that is the case here because if we look at how that form of that matrix has here we have a whole row full of zeros this means it's not full rank and we will not uh, we will not be able to invert this matrix but in this case we can find a manual solution very easily let's remember that P is a row vector so for example if we observe the first column the equation that will result from this is P1 equal to 0 and we, then we have solved for P1 then for the second row will be minus all points is P1 plus uh, uh, P2 is equal to 0 but we know that P1 is equal to 0 already so P2 is also equal to 0 and we can go down the line with this and find that all of the values from 1 to 5 are equal to 0 and that's all of the information we can extract from this because due to the last row being all zeros we have no information about P6 however P is a probability vector so uh, being a probability vector we know that it's the summation of all of its entries are equal to 1 we have to be somewhere at some point so since we have to be somewhere and all of the all of the entries all of the other entries are equal to 0 P6 must be equal to 1 and indeed P6 relates to the sleep state so that's the stationary state in this Markov chain again at any point feel free to interrupt me and ask questions now we will enhance this Markov chain with rewards and a discount factor making it a Markov reward process we cannot yet make ac make um, actions in this system but we can evaluate what is going on and for this as I said we Im introduce rewards um, in this case we're going to define the rewards according to the state we are in and in the exercise we're giving these rewards in which we have a reward of one for the initial beer meeting friends and having another beer we have a reward of two for pizza because why not and a reward of minus three for the last beer because it's always the last beer that gets you and with this and also considering a discount factor we can calculate the state values uh, for this uh, Markov reward process and we can do this through the use of the Bellman equation thanks to the my equation and this recursive formulation we can uh, reduce the infinite uh, transition problem uh, which we will need to evaluate the the return or the expected return which is the value of a, of a given state to just one transition uh, one transition here in which the value is equal to the reward achieved plus the discounted uh, next value um, an analytical solution for this uh, for this thing exists thanks to the gamma uh, effect so the discount factor allows us to to introduce uh, to solve this analytically and we can so see how to do so in Python here on the left uh, we had have the derivation from the Bellman equation to this other form in which we know all of the entries in there this is all why it's important to know how to get that state transition probability uh, matrix 
and we can code this in the um, in Python. We define gamma. We define the state transition probability matrix as we were saying before. We define the reward uh, vector, and we uh, reshape it to make sense of the of the multiplications. And then here we have just this equation once more in Pythonic form. We would have the matrix multiplication of the inverse of uh, the identity matrix with dimension 6 minus gamma times the state transition probability matrix with the reward vector. If we run this, we can get these uh, values. And the better the value, the better the state. So this is what we get with a gamma equal, let's let me rerun this again with a gamma of equal to 0 0.9 and with a gamma equal to 0 0.9 uh, we can find that the best state to be in is the first state which was uh, uh, considered uh, was the state for initial beer why is this this is the case because when we have the initial beer then there's still more fun to be have that night uh, we know that there's a possibility of going to have pizza, there's a possibility of having more beers, meet our own friends, and this is considered in the uh, state value through the long-term view provide, provided by the a large discount factor. However, if we change the discount factor to a low value, for example 0.1, now the best state to be in, be in is pizza. And this is short-sighted but pizza is delicious so that's why that uh, state is larger because it has the larger largest reward and uh, we are not looking ahead too much so it's also important insight to take away from this that the largest reward does not always lead to the largest value because it's not only that reward that counts for that it, we need to look as well to the uh, discounted next uh, states and that would be it for the uh, Markov uh, reward process uh, now we have uh, seen the the evolution of the of the of the Markov chain we have seen how to evaluate it and the next step is to introduce introduce actions and this is uh, what happens in a Markov decision process. Um, in a Markov decision process, as we have here, it's going to be the next day, and we have to deal with uh, the consequences of our night out. Um, we start by being hungover. From being hungover, we can go to sleep and more sleep, or we can go visit the lecture or watch the videos of the lecture and then study or pass the exam. And the difference now is that the transitions and the probabilities of those transitions between states are affected by the actions we take. We can either be lazy or we can be productive. So even though there remains some um, stochastic nature to the, to the system, uh, these probabilities are affected by our uh, choices, our actions. And this gives us agency over the system. Uh, once more, we can uh, calculate the state transition probability matrices and uh, we can calculate this based on uh, each action. So if we're only being lazy, we can see, for example, from hangover, we can only go to sleep. And this is what we observe here. Again, for defining these matrices, we have to consider a given order of the states, which was provided in the exercise. And I don't know, from the state number four, which is visit the lecture, we have an 80% probability of uh, going to study and a 20% probability of passing the exam, as we see here in the diagram. So you have to go through each of those uh, arrows and fill up the appropriate entries in here. Also remember this square boundary means that the state is terminal so this is the same as having a recurrent arrow with a probability equal to one once we pass the exam that's it we are not interested anymore in this problem uh, 
you can find the solutions as well here in the template uh, and the next task that we have is to uh, evaluate some trivial policy uh, once more for this we need to define uh, some rewards in this case we're going to redefine the rewards equally for being productive and for being lazy and we're going to define them like this and this way of defining the rewards essentially means that every time that we are not passing the exam we are being penalized we want to pass the exam as soon as possible um, then we can formulate the problem uh, once more um, it's an example how to do that is shown here we create the state transition probability matrices for being lazy and for being productive and we define gamma uh, gamma was going to be 0 0.9 and we define the reward uh, with the appropriate shape and we can create a for loop here uh, making this a uh, value for the state transition probability matrix matrix first the lazy and then the productive and solve the Bellman expectation equation and print the results and with this uh, we get these uh, state values for being lazy and these state values for being productive how can we interpret this? well first of all we can see that many of the values in the lazy uh, uh, value function are equal to minus 10 and this is because being lazy in this system has very little agency from this point if we're lazy we we'll always end up here if we're lazy we we'll always end up here we we'll always end up here and we don't leave that state um, the only state that has some probability of ending differently is the visiting lecture in which if we are lazy we can study or pass the exam but if we study and we're lazy we will never go to the exam so most uh, paths from being lazy end up in our sleep and that's why all of the values end up being the same and it's um, it's a state value uh, the one of being more sleep that we could actually calculate analytically if we wished uh, that's also part of the bonus question that is proposed here to calculate the state value of uh, being more sleep and only f uh, being lazy for an infinite time horizon without using the Bellman equation and for that we can remember that the value of uh, th the state value is the expected return uh, given that we are in that value the return is this the infinite sum of discounted rewards uh, but the nice thing in this case is that the reward will not change with the state transition because if we are uh, in more sleep and we are lazy we always go back to more sleep so this value here will always be minus one in this whole sum and this uh, summation reduces to minus this value here which we can evaluate as the formula for the geometric series as equal to 1 over 1 minus gamma and choosing a gamma of 0.9 this evaluates to 10 with the minus 1 of the reward we have that the state value of more sleep assuming that we're always going to be lazy is minus 10 uh, if we change this discount factor and we were even more far-sighted this value would reduce even further and indeed in the limit it will approach minus infinity because we're, uh, we're always being penalized for spending time without passing the exam and we can never pass the exam before sleeping and being lazy lots of life um, uh, lessons in this tutorial for the productive uh, part, uh, if we decide to be productive, then we can interpret these rewards as how far away from passing the exam are we. And we can see that we're closest to passing the exam. Let me correct this once more. Um, sorry. There we go. 
uh, we're closest to passing the exam if we are studying and being productive. We have the highest uh, probability there. And that's it for that part of the task. Once more, please stop me uh, at any point if there's questions that you would like to address. Last, uh, no, not last, um, but also not least. Uh, the sixth task, uh, we're going to be dealing with the action value uh, uh, function evaluation. And we are going to define a new policy here, which tells us that we're going to be productive uh, alpha percent of the time, and we're going to be lazy one minus alpha uh, uh, proportion of the time. Uh, with that, first we're going to evaluate this as a 50-50 policy. Uh, we want to calculate the state action, the action value function associated with its state and its action, which takes this, uh, takes this formula. And it's important to note that the, this, uh, this action here does not have to be the value chosen, the action chosen by the policy. Uh, this, uh, this action value function is the result of if we are in a state X and taking any action U, what's, what's, the, what's the value if after that we follow the policy pi. So the outcome of taking some action and then following some policy. We can evaluate this once more. Here we have the code. We define the different parameters. Gamma is our discount factor. Alpha is the probability of being productive. Uh, we define the number of states and action for giving proper format to the variables that uh, are going to contain our solution. And we define the reward vector uh, with the appropriate uh, shape. We define our state transition probability matrices for the two different actions. And we define here the probability, uh, the state transition probability of the policy. So this is done following this equation. The state transition probability of the policy will be necessary for calculating the value functions of the policy. Uh, the, 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 yeah, the value function of the policy, state value function. And is a result of considering the probability of taking uh, a given action in a given state times the state, uh, state uh, transition uh, probability matrix for that action. In this case, this is very simple because no matter the, the state, we always have the same probability of taking each of the actions. So this reduces to uh, being alpha times the probability, uh, the probability of, be of being productive in any state times the state transition probability matrix when we are productive and 1 minus alpha times the state transition probability matrix when we are lazy. This uh, state transition probability matrix is used for calculating the state action values following that policy and then with those state action values of that policy we can calculate the uh, action value function uh, when we are not following that policy and when we're taking any of the um, other uh, actions. So for that we create this tensor here uh, which we do to in order to avoid loops, in order to not have to run this computation twice and have to uh, evaluate all of that. We can stack these two state transition probability matrices uh, in in a deep stack, so we're going from having two uh, six by six uh, matrices to having one six by six by two tensor. Then, uh, just in order to for the calculations to make sense, we need to rotate this uh, this tensor, and we do this through a transposition in which we go from a six by six by two tensor to a six by two by six tensor. That is what this line here is doing, it's taking here the what was the dimension of uh, item 2 and here the dimension of item 1 
and uh, also after this we squeeze uh, that result to uh, eliminate the extra dimension and the result of this is this uh, variable which contains in the first column the uh, action value function for being lazy and in the second column the action value function for being productive and to interpret this uh, result we can in general see that take uh, considering that that in the future we will have a 50 50 policy it's typically better to be productive however in this state it's better to be lazy than to be productive and that state actually is the visiting the lecture why is this because if we're here we're evaluating uh, what's better to be productive on being or being lazy considering that afterwards we will have a 50 50 policy and if we're lazy uh, right away there's a 20 percent chance that we will pass the exam uh, but if we're productive here there's a 50 50 chance that we will be lazy and if we're lazy then we get even further away from passing the exam so essentially after visiting, visiting the um, lecture being lazy is a valid choice supported by computation but most likely the better choice is to generally be, be more productive than 50 50 and we can evaluate that uh, the last part of the problem is the the evaluation of these stochastic policies for different alphas so we can consider yeah uh, we can consider what happens to the state values as alpha increases from 0 to 1 uh, which means uh, when we are going from being continuously lazy to, conti to being continuously productive for this we import another module called the matplotlib and this line of code I had to change it at least in my implementation due to some deprecation of the package uh, we define again the some uh, the dimensionality of the of the state space and here the number of samples that we're going to take for the alpha vector so the alpha vector will be a linearly spaced vector from 0 to 1 with the number of samples that we decide to give it and we will store the state value uh, uh, state values in a matrix of n by number of sam samples with n being the dimension of the state space uh, not secrets here once more we define gamma state transition probability matrices and rewards uh, we manipulate the dimensionality of alphas for uh, having the correct uh, dimensions in the correct uh, direction so that uh, this can be done this computation can be done in one go uh, when we are using the reshape um, function this minus one just uh, infers the the proper value that this has to have based on the length of the or the size of the original uh, tensor and the number of dimensions that you're giving it in other directions and uh, after evaluating all of this we can plot it and one can go through this code but it's pretty uh, straightforward uh, the result of that would be uh, this figure here first thing we can see is that the state uh, value of passing the exam is always equal to zero because that is the reward that we have and it's a stationary state so if you're passing the exam that's it your reward will not be uh, different from that then we can see here uh, once more remember that low alpha equal being lazy and high alpha equal being productive when we're being la uh, completely lazy uh, our best chance of passing is uh, to visit the lecture because at least there there was some uh, probability of of going and to the exam and passing the 
as we are becoming more and more and more productive, uh, it makes more sense to go to study. And once more, uh, this is because if we're mostly lazy and we go uh, after the visit the, the lecture to study, there's a possibility that we just end up in the more sleep state. But uh, if we are confident that in the future we will be more productive, our chances of passing the exam, our reward indeed gets, gets much better as we study more and more. Last thing, uh, if you're not going to be studying or visiting the lecture, uh, sleeping is better than being hungover, it seems. So that's more or less the interpretation that we get from this from these results. Uh, I hope this was not too quick. You can have access to all of these uh, templates and solutions in the uh, in the Git uh, repository. Uh, also, this video will be uploaded. Uh, you can feel free to ask me any questions now about these uh, solutions. And remember that uh, if you want to be lazy, yes, watching the videos and visiting the lecture uh, gives you the best chance of passing. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I hope to see all of you in the next tutorial where 